Hey everyone, Matty Amendola here for SonicScoop.com, and today I'm here thanks to Sound Toys. As a longtime user, when they asked if I had any video ideas, I immediately thought of how much fun it would be to mix an entire song with nothing but their plugins. For my fellow Sound Toys users, you know the challenges that can come up in this process, and you could probably guess the direction I took the mix in stylistically. For those of you still learning about Sound Toys plugins, their current version 5 has 21 effects ranging from aggressively analog tone shaping emulations to modern cinematic shimmer with a bevy of time and pitch based manipulation. All the cool shit. I'm stoked to show them all off today in this mix I'm going to break down. And when we're done, you could head over to SoundToys.com to get a free 30 day trial of the entire SoundToys 5 product line. I dreamt all the while about a fairy tale as I sat up on a hill in a castle of stone, never left alone. I'll have everything I need and I'd never come down. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence shut, everything just fell wrong. Naive to reborn, deserted but strong. I learned I could never get high. All right, so this will be fun. Let's bypass every single plugin and see where this whole thing started. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence shut, everything just fell wrong. Naive to reborn, deserted but strong. I learned I could never get high. Okay, so we're not fixing anything in the mix. We are making it in the mix. One more time with everything on. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence shut, everything just fell wrong. Naive to reborn, deserted but strong. I learned I could never get high until I come down. Cool, so when I think sound toys, that's what I think. Character and vibe for days. So before we start breaking down all the tracks individually, uh, when I finished the mix, I wanted to put a little pseudo master on it and I created just a small mastering chain running the mix out to a few pieces here on my desk. I wanted to hit my Burl uh, converter. We also needed to make up some gain, so I'm limiting with Isotopes Ozone. Aside from that, this mix is exclusively sound toys. All right, let's start with the live drums. Believe it or not, it's just a single mic in the room. It's a two bar loop, loop throughout the entire song. This is something I typically do when I want the drums to feel like uh, it's a sample. Not much on this chain here. We're starting off with the radiator and I love what this tube emulation does. It makes the top super silky, does a really magical thing to the low end. We're also adding some low end as well as taking away some treble, driving the input a little bit. Now, the Devil Lock, which we're using for compression all over this mix, is super aggressive. This thing is starting to compress before you even turn any knob in here, and that's why sometimes we're going to see this mix knob all the way down at 1%. In this case, it's on blast. So, as you could imagine, in the grand scheme of things, the kick and snare might get a little lost, and that's where we actually have some isolated kick and snare from this file um, that were just created with a gate. 
on the, the kick ISO, I'm adding some low end, I'm adding some top end, doing a, a nice scoop in the mids, and I'm also doing the same thing on the snare. I'm trying to keep the phase um, as coherent as possible. And on the kick, I'm just trying to hear and feel that lower octave. On the snare, I'm trying just to get a little bit of presence so it kind of appears a little bit more in front of that hi-hat. So those drums are feeling good, but they're all mono. I want to stereoize them just a bit. So I created this room verb here. I'm using Echo Boy Jr. first. And this is just to create a little reflection. That opened up the drums a bit, and then I wanted something a little longer on the snare, so we added another little plate, uh, a little bit longer, with a CQ right after it, to kind of, you know, I like EQing my verbs, especially on snare, to, to try to make it really feel like it's, it's part of the room. On the drum bus, we have a CQ knocking out some 3.5K. This is probably so that hi-hat doesn't get annoying, um, especially because we are crushing it uh, with the devil lock directly after, adding a little bit of crunch, fast release, also tone shaping it a bit with the darkness, and the mix on this is at one. All right, later on in the song, we have an array of other drum loops and, and percussion. And on this loop in particular, I wanted to add a little spice, so we're starting with the micro shift. Next up, we got the tremolator. I wanted to give it more of a percussive feel, almost like a shaker, so we're using the eighth note chop preset here. After that, to kind of smear everything, we have an Echo Boy Jr. Finishing it off with a CQ to kind of fit it into the rest of what's going on. In context. Okay, so on the bass tracks individually, not much going on at all. We have a bass amp. And then we've got a DI. Those are going out to an aux. Once I got the balance I liked and we're kicking things off with a radiator. Aside from adding some low end, we're crushing the input stage here. That's followed up by two CQ EQs. So I don't have the luxury here of just grabbing a parametric and kind of carving out things to make space for maybe the kick drum. And there's some finessing going on. On one EQ, I'm boosting some mid-range, and on the other one, I'm, I'm cutting some mid-range. That's followed up by a decapitator. We have the mix pretty wet here. We're not driving it too much, even though we're on punish. We're also using the filters here. So if I hold down control, when I click this low cut, you'll see we're chopping off everything at 37 hertz. And then on the high cut, if we do the same thing, we're chopping off everything to 1K. I'm also using the E style, which I believe is based on EMI sound. And last but not least, some compression here with the devil lock. The A bus is typically where I like to send all my drums, percussion, and bass. I like to glue all those together and keep them as a unit. I'm using a CQ, cutting off a little lows, adding some mid and top. Then we got a decapitator, doing what I typically do with my A bus, which is send it through some tape. So you'll see that I'm on the A style on the decapitator, which is for the Ampex. And then last but not least, because I don't have uh, attack controls on 
the devil lock, which is the compressor I'm using the most, the drums were getting really punchy. So I sent this through very, very little bit of this little plate here you'll see on the mix, just to kind of push things further back just a tad. So here's the A bus chain. All right, moving on over into keyboard world, we start off with the Rhodes. We're starting off with a CQ, cutting off some low end. Radiator, again, for just that great tube vibe that this has really been giving us. We're adding some Tremolator to get kind of like a whirly thing going, a little bit of movement on the Rhodes, and then finishing things off with a little bit of Little Plate, which is also modded. Okay, so with these roads, I had a ukulele part. So that's a contact mic inside my ukulele going through a bunch of pedals on my pedal board. Now, the funny thing about this story is I bought this pedal, it's called an Echolution, purposely because I wanted a hardware version, something like the Sound Toys Crystallizer, which I end up using to increase this kind of building on effect of, you know, uh, different granular delays moving forward and changing in pitch. We're also using that same ukulele mic setup on this hook vocal. In that moment after I recorded the ukulele, I just told Katie, hey, sing into the uke. You know, the contact mic was in it, it was running through pedals. So I just sing, just ad lib a bunch of stuff, and I ended up just grabbing this one little line that she sang, and it ended up sounding like this. We have a handful of pianos filling in a bunch of space throughout the track, but when we go to the chorus and everything strips down to piano, vocal, and bass, this is what we got going on. We've got a CQ adding a little bit of everything. We got that classic 15 ips tape slap on the Echo Boy. We're finishing off with Decapitator. In the second chorus, more colors kick in, and it's just Little Plate. A really long one. This is kind of my go-to uh, plate reverb for when I just want to kind of put things out into the ether. And I'm cutting off with the low cut. If we control click this, you can see I'm cutting off at 63 hertz here. No mod, about eight seconds of reverb. Here's that with the piano. We also have this slightly out of tune synth that I think is an old Casio I have, where literally all I'm doing is fucking it up. That's just about all the instrumentation except for this guitar that kicks in at the end of the song. Okay, so we talked about my A bus and how I like to take all those and put them together. On my B bus, I send everything there in the mid-range instrumentation that I think needs to be a little bit more dense, needs to get a little wider, and ultimately just take up a little bit more space while just feeling bigger. The trick here is to make sure it's a dual mono plugin. Now, we have the same settings for both the left and the right, but what happens when each side is affected differently it creates a little bit of movement, depending on what's going on on that specific side, things seem to get a little wider. 
Now, it's a really cool trick with the Devil Lock because we're also adding a little bit of crunch in there and a little bit of crush. Okay, here's our main lead vocal with no processing. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence struck, everything just fell wrong. And then there's a trend here. You know, right off the bat, I wanted to just give this a little bit of mojo. We're doing that with the radiator. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Next up in the chain, we have the devil walk. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence struck, everything just fell wrong. So for me, that's pushing her forward. And it's giving her a little bit of a, a aggression that I really wanted for this first verse to kick in. That's followed up by a little saturation with Decapitator. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence struck, everything just fell wrong. Naive to reborn, deserted but strong. I learned I could never get high until I come down. I'm a big fan of finding the sweet spot where it's just about to break up. So depending on the singer's performance and, and how loud they get with it, that might be what it takes for the, the vocal to just start distorting ever so slightly. So for me, that's kind of a sweet spot on the decapitator right there. We're finishing this off with some CQ EQ. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence struck, everything just fell wrong. In terms of effects on this main lead vocal, we've got a spread, we've got a plate, we've got a delay. So for that, we're using micro shift um, just to spread the vocal out a little bit, stereoize it. On what I'm calling the lead plate, we're hitting the primal tap first. This is just a really quick delay to kind of give ourselves a little bit of pre-delay before it hits the little plate. Uh, I'm also trying, you know, I don't have that many reverbs. Um, in this session, I'm using Little Plate a lot. So anything I can put before it that I haven't done um, elsewhere is going to give that reverb a different dimension, and that's what I'm looking to do here. And then last but not least, just a little bit of slap, kind of reflection on the Echo Boy. It didn't last long, only the length of a song. Once the silence struck, everything just fell wrong. Naive to reborn, deserted but strong. I learned I could never get high until I come down. We have a few vocal doubles that kick in later, and I'm doing something I do a lot, which is throw a little altar boy on, set it to kind of do perfect fifth harmony, and then just kind of blend it in underneath the lead vocal. And I love the texture that Little Alter Boy uh, gives you. And of course, you can use any pitch correction software out there, and that'll give you a more realistic kind of vibe. But Little Alter Boy has a thing, and singers love hearing their voice through it. Um, you can also do automation like I'm doing on this track, where I wanted the harmony to kind of shift with the melody. Deserted but strong I learned I could never get high Until I come down Alright, on our harmony vocal here in the second verse I'm using Sound Toys effect rack Sometimes it's cool to just put something together And just get really creative And just put it right on the track and not even worry about it That's what I'm doing with effect rack here So inside effect rack you can host um, A majority of Sound Toys plugins And what I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of distortion with Decapitator, I'm going through an Echo, finishing it off with some crunch with the Devil Lock. Now the cool thing is you can come up here and control all of these, um, and that's where I'm playing with the mix right here. So on this chain with the Harmony Vox, we ended up with this. With every up there's a down, every smile a child, made up of a jury of best friends and enemies. And I can't lie, sometimes I just don't know what to do um, with something every once in a while. And I just open up Effect Rack and I just start experimenting. Um, it's a lot of great tools and, you know, the fact that you can kind of shape everything um, that you've put together at one time with the wet-dry and even with recycle and input and output and all that stuff, it's a really cool tool. For the chorus, I had this demo vocal uh, from a good friend of mine, Helen Austin. It was just so cool, I figured, you know what, maybe this is just a chorus. Maybe it feels like a sample uh, pulled from somewhere else. There's a moment in time. There it is, clean. 
Now processed. There's a moment in time when all things can be made right. And then shortly after, we have a really cool harmony that kicks in where I really used Echo Boy in, in some of my favorite ways, which is saturating um, the delay itself to holy hell. I'm crushing the input, adding a ton of saturation. Ended up feeding back to create almost like a lead guitar kind of thing. Check this out. There's a look in your eye. So I just love the way that distortion just fades off into the distance. For our background vocals here, we have three sets of two, pan left and right. Got the balance that I liked. Oh, oh. That's dry, and now here's the chain. Oh, oh. And I think that is everything. Here it is from the top. With every up there's a down, every smile a child Made up of a jury of best friends and enemies A shadow of doubt in a sky with no clouds Sometimes you have to put the shades down to let the sun in Take a chance of your life. 
Hope you all enjoyed that. And once again, I want to thank Sound Toys for giving me the opportunity to have so much fun with that mix. Go to soundtoys.com to grab your 30-day free trial of all their plugins. Feel free to hit me up on Instagram at Maddie Amendola. See you soon.